Well, I've got like some coffee here. Um, this is actually my Georgia mug because I went to the University of Georgia. <laughs> Go dogs, right? Go dogs. Yeah. Well, not not when we played y'all in the Rose Bowl, though. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. It came back to haunt us for the national championship day. Yeah, that's all right. Hey, at least you guys got to go. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Gymnasts on Zoom drinking coffee um, or tea, depending on who you are. Um, I'm your host, Patricia Duffy, and I'm here with three time world team member world medalist, three-time American Cup champion, 10-time NCAA champion, Neeson Emory Award winner. That's like the short list, um, but I figured you have to include all of it, Yule Moldauer. <laughs> hey, thanks for having me. Great to have you, Yule. Um, so first, as you can tell, we talked about this. This is my Doha world background, but I think it's really important to kind of mix it up. And if you have a Zoom background you want to throw up um, or a picture or anything like that, um, just to make it a little bit more fun and you don't have to, you know, have your white wall behind you. <laughs> Nothing's wrong with the white wall. There we go. That one might be a bit, a bit rough. I guess. Yeah, I don't think I'll, uh, I'll use that one or, I'll, or this one. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know why your door is like interfering with this. Yeah. Love that one of you. Is that you like laying on the floor posing? Yeah, that was me when I was really little. <laughs> That's I might just do this because it's something I made when I was in art class when I was really young. <laughs> I don't know why. I mean, we can just keep that up. I don't <laughs> Yeah. You know what? I think we'll just stick with that. Okay, the white wall. That's fine. So Zoom background, not going to happen today, and that's okay. But we got a glimpse of some good ones. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> next up, what is in your drink? What are you drinking today? I know you said you don't really drink coffee. Um, so I, I do drink coffee sometimes. It's very rare. Um, okay. I do. So my coaches have like a coffee maker. Mm -hmm. and sometimes in the morning I'll drink coffee, but usually I'll try and show it. I drink English breakfast tea. Oh, I love the English twinings. That's really good. Yeah, and I put milk in it, and I put a couple teaspoons of sugar. Oh, okay. Yeah, this, that's awesome. This is something I've been drinking since I was a child. You know, I've loved tea my whole life, so. Um, and for me, I'm not much of a caffeine uh, freak. You know, I don't need caffeine a lot in my life, so. Yeah. You know, the less I drink and the less I use it, you know, I try and just keep it on a, on a low. Let's talk about some current events that are going on in the gymnastics world. First of all, it was announced today, I don't know if you heard, but at the postponement of the Doha World Cup, which obviously that's an individual World Cup. I mean, it doesn't impact Team USA mm -hmm. necessarily directly for the guys. Um, obviously, Jade Carey for the women has already locked up a berth there as long as, you know, they continue and either have this happen or just give it to whoever finishes first in the current rankings. But um, with the postponement of that and the cancellation of the all around world cup, um, just a lot of things are like up in the air with qualifications and it just can't be, I'm sure even hearing about something that you're not necessarily involved with, um, getting postponed because of the current pandemic is probably not, um, the best news that you want to hear <laughs> on a Monday morning. So yeah. what were your, what were your thoughts when you heard about that? Um, and I mean, have you heard talked with anybody else about like the all-around world cup being canceled and losing out on that spot for the u.s guys actually when fig announced that all of the world cups were canceled for the all-around spots um you know the first person to tell us was um our national team coordinator which was uh, jason mm -hmm. and brett and um you know it it's it's something that i can't get mad about or the team can it's just something that we kind of have to just like sit down and just embrace it and understand that's what's going on with the world. You know, of course, you know, we would love to try and get an extra spot for the Olympic team, but yeah. with the rules in FIG, it, it says that placement for the all round spots goes to the previous three teams at world championships in 2019. So that's China, Japan, and Russia. 
And, you know, it, it, it sucks because I know that, you know, the U.S. has, you know, a ton of guys that are trying to get individual spots as well, like Steven Nikorzik on horse and, you know, maybe Don on rings. And, and, you know, there's so many different events and it, it's tough, but it's something that, you know, personally, I try not to let affect my training. You know, the best way to look at it is, you know, there are going to be all these negative things thrown at you throughout this year. And it's up to you mentally to push through it and just train and be prepared. You know, I know, like, again, Alec Yoder could, you know, wanted to get into those, um, you know, those uh, meets to try and get an individual spot on horse. Yeah. And I know that that's probably tougher on him because he's trying to go more for individual where I'm on. Under. So, you know, I, I feel for these guys and it sucks, but it's something that, you know, that we have to attack this year. And that's something that we all knew could have came up just with all the, you know, pandemic situations around the world. So it's something that you can't really get upset about. You just kind of have to just listen to the no the news and put your head down and work. It's just something that, uh, you know, we kind of expected and it's not something that we wanted to happen, but it's just something that did. And it's, it's just all about moving forward and being prepared. Yeah. Yeah. And unfortunately, like it's the good news is, is that the next quad they're changing up the Olympic qualification process. And I don't think it's going to be as heavy on these, like the four plus two, that's not going to happen. I think it's going back to a five person team. Uh, yeah. Don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure that's how it is. Um, yeah, I've heard, so, I've heard news too, that they're just going to go back to the five man team as well. Yeah. I mean, we're still stuck in this like limbo of, um, being on this code for another year and this qualification process being stuck with it for until obviously Tokyo and stuff. But so hopefully this won't happen again. I mean, but at the same time, this is the first time it's happened and who could have foreseen that, yeah. um, that it would have been a lot of people probably before the pandemic hit and everything were just like, Oh, there's no problem. It's going to happen. And all these meets are going to happen. And, you know, there's no, no, nothing wrong with spreading it out. Like the individual series over, two years spreading out the all around world cup over four months or three months or whatever it is, but it did. So I'm sure that the FIG is probably going to make sure that they can try to consolidate those qualification processes into like a few meets and yeah. not spread it out over time for a risk of this happening again. With winter cup coming up. I know that like, for instance, we talked to Eddie Penev last week and he, it's going to be his first meet back since winter cup last year. But I know that you have, competed at a couple of meets maybe two maybe three yeah. three so yeah. three meets um since the start of the year you competed at the beach blast invitational and then what were the other two so the other two we just had um just the 50 to 80 guys we had yeah. judges come in and have like a virtual meet for the parents and then okay. two weekends ago i went to extreme altitude in alafia colorado mm -hmm. which um had about six gyms there and I didn't compete all around, but I just competed four events, which were horse, um, ring, uh, not rings, vault, P bars and high bar. Yep. And, um, it was actually my decision to compete. Um, Vladimir at first was like, hey, you know, you don't have to compete. And I was like, no, um, you know, I think it'd be good for me and Tay to just get one more, you know, meet under our belt just to get ready for winter cup. Yeah. And that kind of, I mean, it not, doesn't necessarily put you at an advantage, but I'm sure it's good to get back out there and feel comfortable on the events and being in front of however big of a crowd, some people, um, obviously not regular crowds, um, but some people before you do travel to Indianapolis and are on that national stage against um, other Team USA athletes. After those three meets, I mean, how are you feeling about your routines and um, I mean, I know that I've seen you working like a new P-bar mount. Yep. Um, do you know if we're going to be seeing that or have you, yep. <laughs> have you debuted that already? Like, have you already practiced out of those couple of meets? Not practiced, but obviously performed it. Um, and, and what kind of, how are you feeling about your routines overall? So Beach Blast, um, you know, it, that was one meet that I really wanted to come out and show that I'm going to be ready for this year, um, no matter you know, the circumstances of not competing and almost the whole year, you know, I, I went in there, I hit six or six on, you know, some upgrade routines. And then at 5280, I tried even more upgrade routines with the new P-bar mount, you know, a triple double on high bar, um, 
double double laid out on rings and a, and a extreme actually did even more upgrades i did a triple ball on vault so for me i use those meets to really get the feels of how i'm going to be competing um these new upgrade routines and you know i'm excited for winter cup because you know for me i'm not going to look at it as oh it's my first meet that really like means a lot you know because this is our first big competition this year and for me i want to just go out there and just show the committee that i'm ready um mm -hmm. no matter what's been going on you know that's one thing that i try and tell everyone at my gym and anyone that reaches out um you know it all starts in the practice you know just imagine you know small audience imagine you saluting you know the judges imagine the committee watching you and just and just make yourself feel nervous and for me i've been doing that a lot in the gym and mm -hmm. when i went to these previous meets you know i never looked at it as oh this is just a practice for winter cup you know i looked at it as like this is the you know olympic trials this is the olympic games i tried to put myself in a situation where i felt really nervous mm -hmm. and i wanted to you know prove to myself that i could hit no matter what no matter if it was my first or second or third meet into the season and you know going back to beach blast on my first meet mm -hmm. you know there are, there are ways you can make it feel like not your first meet you know you can go in there and be like you know what i've i've been here before i've saluted these judges before you know this is not something to look at that you've done for the first time this is just an, another opportunity that you haven't gotten in you know nine months so for me it, it was it's been all mental training because you know with all the like you said with all the cancellations with all the international meets you know i don't know if i'll get a chance to go compete internationally until the olympic games mm -hmm. you know even if i make the team yeah and so it it all begins in the gym and how you know you approach the event how you approach each turn and how you approach learning how to hit so for me it's actually been fun because i've been learning a lot about what to think about before each event and how to you know perform well when the circumstances this year are just insane so yeah. i'm excited for winter cup you know i'm excited to see where our team's at because you know look at beach blast you know i got to compete with you know pretty much all those guys again so now here's another chance that we all get to come together and compete and really show that you know we're strong as a team <laughs> so i'm really excited to see all the guys and see how much they've improved mm -hmm. and i think you know this winter cup is going to be about who's you know mentally toughest you know who yeah. has been training right who has been you know making themselves feel nervous in the gym so when they get to winter cup it's not a competition it's a performance there's been a lot of conversation around the mental aspect of the game is being postponed and having to reset your mind to a whole nother olympic year and just the kind of drawbacks that come with that if, after you've been training for this you've actually been training for this your whole life not just for four years it's not just a quad um, it's been something you've been building to for a very long time and to have that delayed even by a year, especially in gymnastics and a sport where like it, there's so much emphasis on peaking that it can be really challenging mentally. And like Simone has mentioned that where that was something that she had to think about before coming back. You sound pretty mentally tough, but how has that been for you? Like how, how has your mental health been challenged I guess the past year because physically you're 24 years old you probably can go for quite a few more years um and this probably won't be your last push for an Olympic Games but mentally it can be difficult yeah and you know going back when back in March when everything shut down you know we're three months away from trials and or it was a Thursday I remember this actually and we had a one-on-six in the gym and Mark when I was at OU, Mark lined us up and he goes, guys, um, you know, I, I think gym's going to be canceled. Let's start practice and I'll let you know throughout the practice. And, you know, mid practice of us doing a one on six, Mark lined us back up and was like, hey, we all need to leave. The gym's closed. Everything's being canceled. And then we started training at Bart Connor. And then within a week, we found out that the Olympic Games were canceled. And for me, it was tough um you know I kind of I felt like I just lost my motivation I kind of lost who I was yeah. um, because for me that has been a dream of mine forever 
and for all the hard work and the hours and the pain and the grit, you know, it, it was tough. You know, I, I, like I said, I kind of lost who I was. I, you know, wasn't motivated to even get out of bed or cook. And then I remember I came back to Denver and I trained for a week and I remember telling myself, okay, you know what, this is, this is a year to get even better. Let's, Mm -hmm. let's get in the gym. Let's start this up. It's time to get ready. And after that, you know, I really learned that you can't always let the outside things around you affect who you are inside. And for me, I just learned, I was like, okay, you know what, no matter if it's canceled again, no matter if all these things are getting canceled, I'm going to put a hundred percent into everything that I do because you never know when that shot can be taken away again. Yeah. For me, that really motivated me. You know, I, I got back to Denver. I started training with Vladimir and Arena and they have been amazing. You know, they Arena, you know, brings tea every morning for me. <laughs> she <laughs> That's brings so sweet. Me, yeah, she brings me breakfast, she brings me lunch and dinner. So she does all this meal planning for me. And then Vladimir, he's just, you know, he's been through the ropes of gymnastics. So he just knows, you know what I need to be prepared for this year. And it's been amazing. It, it really got me motivated again. And, and for me, you know, my goal isn't just to go to the Olympics. You know, I want to go to the Olympics and bring hardware back for the U.S. You know, that is my ultimate goal. And it's really just changed my mindset, you know, it, because like you said, you know, we don't have a lot of meets this year, you know, very few spectators and, it, it's going to be tough, but that's what you have to do in the gym is you just have to let yourself know is that this year is an unusual year, mm-hmm. but if you can push through this year, the next years in your life will be so much easier. And it, and you really do learn a lot about what you need to tell yourself through all the mental sides of gymnastics, you know, the pain, yeah. um, you know, the soreness, the scheduling, um, you know, all the numbers, knowing that, you know, it could just be taken away. And for me, it's just, you know, I kind of have this mentality of what would a Marine do? And mm-hmm. and I always say that to the guys in the gym. And I say, what would a Marine do? And they say they wouldn't stop. And that's kind of the mentality I've taken on is mm-hmm. I'm not going to stop no matter the circumstances around me. What I can control is myself, my training, and how I think. I want to pull out something that you just mentioned, the Marine thing. Do you have any, like, military family where you got that from, or did you just – I, I actually have a best friend. His name's Jake Maloli. He was okay. at OU the whole time I was there. Okay. And he's, you know, the sweetest guy. He's, you know, one of those guys that, you know, you want to be when you grow up. He's just like a gentleman. He's a man. You know, when he says something, you really stop and listen to what he has to say. And, you know, we contact each other here and there. And, you know, he, when I wear USA on my chest, you know, it's a lot different from when he goes out and wears USA on his chest. And we kind of just have this mentality for each other of like, let's represent the country in two different spectrums, but as one. And yeah. so for me, that really hit home because, you know, I've had so many friends go into military service and they do so much for us that, you know, is crazy. And, and, you know, I feel like they deserve a lot of respect and, you know, it, it they tell us things that they have to go through f- through training. And I'm like, holy cow, that's, that's insane. And I think that's being in the gym at six in the morning is insane. And so we kind of made up that saying, you know, Alan Bauer, uh, he, yeah, he just kind of was like, what would a Marine do? And it's just kind of been our go-to thing. That's a really good saying to have. My dad's actually an army ranger, so I can relate to that. Um, so that's, that's kind of what like, I guess like I was an army brat, um, but he's special forces. So we don't really have to like move around a lot when we were younger, but you still get that military upbringing and that, you know, push through mindset and, you know, keep going. As people have gotten back into the gym, we've seen a lot of people really pushing themselves. And I can see that you're really pushing yourself, obviously, like that new P-bars mount is great. Like it's awesome. And um, like you said, all these other upgrades that you're excited about, and when I talked to Eddie last week, he was talking about, you know, Kazuki Minami. And then obviously we see like Simone out here doing stuff like the Yurchinja yeah. Double Pike. That's just like unbelievable. Something that's previously been thought impossible. So what, when you, like when you're scrolling through social media and you're seeing stuff like this, does it drive you and push you to even go harder? 
Oh, yeah. And for me, it's exciting because it just shows that people have a huge heart. Mm-hmm. You know, when times are crazy and, and things are unknown to see, you know, the U.S. on both sides, men's and women's, pushing themselves to the max, it's very inspirational. So as a gymnast, when you see these things and you see, you know, clips from international gymnasts as well, you know, it's it's really time to gear up. And, you know, like I said, you know, every gymnast doesn't want to just go to the Olympics. They want to go and, and, you know, bring something back. And I think this year, especially with all the downtime that we've had, you really get to learn about your goals, who you are, and how to get there. And for me, you know, I just, I really sat down with myself and I wrote down what I wanted to accomplish. And, and I put it somewhere where I could see it every morning when I wake up, no matter if I'm tired, sore, or unmotivated, I, I read it and I tell myself, all right, it's time to get there. It's time to, you know, work, work, work. Um, just like I said, you know, you never know when anything's going to be taken. And so, you know, if I were to make the Olympic team, I wouldn't want to just kind of, you know, train lightly just because it was unknown. I want to be there and be ready, more ready than any other gymnast. And it really, it really does motivate you to see, you know, gymnasts getting back in and doing upgrades because that just shows that, you know, pe- people really want to go and, and, you know, they're working hard to get there and, you know, I think it, it helps me too, because, you know, I don't want, I don't want to get beaten by anyone. You know, I know, you know, that's just my drive. You know, I want to be, you know, the best gymnast I can be, and I want to be pushing others as well. Let's talk about like worst case scenario. So obviously the worst case scenario is the games don't happen. Mm -hmm. Um, And it seems like the international Olympic committee is taking every step and every precaution to develop, you know, playbooks and, precautions and there's going to be a lot of things going into this um but it's still uncertain as much as they're really adamant that it's going to happen and that's just the facts of life it's reality that we have to deal with and y'all have to deal with um and it's difficult but if the games were to be canceled Mm. what tells you and like we've said it's kind of different for someone like you like this isn't going to be your last go round, correct? Like you're going to keep going, but it is a dream taken away um, because you could have been, if this scenario played out, you could have been a Tokyo Olympian for the U S men. It could be, you know, a two-time Olympian down the road and something that you've worked for. But if that were to happen, I mean, what, looking back, what is it? Do you think that'll tell you, you know, I gave it my all and I'm proud despite all of the things that happened this year and despite this game get the games being canceled Mm -hmm. if that were to happen what would kind of be the teller the accomplishment for you as a athlete that says you know what like I gave it my all I'm very proud of myself and although it didn't work out the best way it could like I did this and that's okay and I'm proud of what happened this year. I'm proud of what I put out there this season. Well, the, the first thing I would probably do if I heard the news is I would thank my coaches, my family, my teammates, um, you know, everyone that's helped me get to where I was, you know, my school, Mark, Vlad, Arena, Sasha. And once I got through all the thank yous, I would, you know, look back on my training this year and I would say, you know what, I went into the gym seven hours a day. I gave it everything I had. I feel like I helped my teammates get better as well in the gym. And I would just let myself know that I gave it everything every single day. And I would just start getting ready for the next Olympic Games. Yeah. Um, for me, it would definitely be tough. Like you said, it, it would be, you know, a dream that I've been training for my whole life taken away. But, you know, that's something that you have to mentally know in the back of your head that it's a 50 50 honestly it's a yes or no and that's exactly why I push myself in the gym as hard as I can because I want to say no matter what happens I give it every single bit I had in the gym every single day and to say that I am proud of because even if I heard today I'd be like you know what I feel like I had a fantastic year this year I really grew as a gymnast I really grew as a young adult and you know, it, it would definitely be tough, but, you know, it's just something that 
it, it would probably make you stronger. You know, you would probably be even more motivated. For me, I'd be like, oh man, I have four more years. Let's go. You know, I have three and, more years. At least that's the bright side. If that worst case scenario were to happen, <laughs> it's only three years versus four. So you cut one of those off and hey, that makes, I guess that's, you know, looking on the bright side. <laughs> and that's something that Vladimir, Marina, and Sasha, and even Mark, Taki, Steve, Chris Brooks, and Josh Yee said, you know, they said, no matter what happens, you have to be able to say at the end of the year, when you look back on your training, that you said you did everything that you could. And I think when you can really say that and mean it and, and believe in it a hundred percent, it, it won't be as hard getting through, you know, a, a bump in the road. Yeah. So if, if the Olympics were canceled, I could honestly say, you know what, I gave it everything I had and I'm happy the way I was going, because if I, if, if it were to happen, I knew, I know I was going to be successful. And I think when you have that peace in yourself, um, you know, it, it actually lifts you up a little more. You mentioned how you were training at OU before the pandemic happened, and then you moved back to Colorado. Yep. And obviously that means that you went from your coach of four plus years, Mark, and your fellow like OU alumni teammates and you were training basically with the OU guys mm -hmm. to coming back to 5280 and um, getting back with your former coaches and getting back into that rhythm. So what has that, that's something that a lot of people, a lot of people haven't necessarily dealt with and it's more something that happens on the guy side, especially because a lot of you guys after you graduate from college stay there and we'll try to train with the team. Yeah versus moving back to your old gym while the women are typically like Simone for instance because she's right on the top of my head like she is at world champion center and she's not changing world champion center so on top of all of this you're having to move back to Colorado and get back to training in a different environment so you kind of alluded to this but how has that transition been and I know you it seems like you have a pretty good group of guys around you like with Taylor Burkhardt and um, you know just it seems like a lot of younger guys as well that maybe are a bit motivating for you so what has that been like? You know and for OU when I made the decision to leave it wasn't it, it was definitely a hard decision because I love that team and I still do and Mark has been a phenomenal coach and you know Josh has been a phenomenal coach and Chris was a great coach but he was leaving as well to Arkansas and, you know, um, it was definitely a little scary at first, not scary in a bad way, but just like, man, like, is this going to work out or not? Because there are so many things that I have to change. You know, I go from, you know, guys my age to, you know, guys that are, you know, the oldest there is 18. And then, wow. <laughs> um, you know, I have this routine at OU where, you know, it's conditioning in the morning events in the afternoon, but here it's you know, try and do six events in the morning, six events in the afternoon. And for me, it was actually really cool because when I got to 5280 Vladin Arena, they asked me, they were like, what does OU do that helped you on this and this? And for me, I got to explain the conditioning. I got to explain the stick games or the basics that we did. And they really embraced OU and 5280 together. And for me, they've they've kind of made me a leader in the gym, which I love being like kind of a captain. So I get to kind of bring this OU mentality of, of working hard every single day, you know, championships are won in preseason, not in season yeah. to the gym. And for me, it's been exciting, you know, Arena and Vlad are so, so open to learning new things all the time that they just love, you know, new ideas, new conditioning or new basics. And then they also love, um, you know, putting whatever they have into it. So it's been a blast. You know, of course, I miss all of the OU guys. You know, those guys are my brothers. But now I'm in a position where I, I get to be a leader again. You know, I kind of get that. I get to stay in this, like, captain feel like I was at OU and really, you know, give back to these younger guys what it feels like to kind of be on a college team. Yeah. And so I'm trying to bring that college team aspect, the huddle ups, the team warm ups you know, the mindset of going to each event. And it's been super fun because, you know, when you're training with a bunch of younger guys, it's turn after turn after turn after turn. And all the energy. 
that. And I'm like, oh, I got to keep up with these young guys. And, <laughs> you know, Taylor has been phenomenal. He, he really doesn't act like he's 18. You know, I, he really acts like he's been through college. And for me to have that teammate to really relate to someone, it's been super helpful because, you know, Taylor is a powerhouse. You know, he throws big skills. He can do it at, you know, seven in the morning. And I'm not going to lie, when I first got to 5280, you know, I started having to do sets at seven in the morning. And I was like, I don't know if I can do this. But he was like, no, push through, push through. It'll get easier. After a month, you know, it just started clicking. You know, I actually just did a one on six this morning. Oh my God. That's why it went a little longer. Start your week. (laughs) Yeah. And for me, I was like, I was, I was actually thinking on this, in this, in the car ride. I was like, wow, like I can't believe I got through that, that, you know, that easily, you know, I literally didn't feel like I was working out in the morning and it's just something that Arena and Vlad bring that mindset to as well. You know, they're like, they told me, they're like, you need to be able to be sitting on the floor at four in the morning and a coach comes up to you and tells you to do a high bar set in two minutes. And I was like, wow, that's actually really cool to have that mindset to be able to hit no matter you know, what time it is, no matter if you're sore, no matter if you're tired. So it, it's almost like they have that OU mindset already. And it's been really fun and easy because they're just so open to everything and they've been great. And, you know, the move was really easy. Um, you know, I actually just moved back in with my dad just because he was a living, He's he's been living alone at the time. So it's actually been really fun for me and my dad because when I was uh, younger you know me and my dad would travel to meets you know together all the time so it's it's really nice to have that you know dad and son energy back Mm -hmm. and you know I was actually dating a girl in Oklahoma but we decided to break up just because you know distance was going to be really hard and you know I'm I'm really not the same person I was in college to who I am now you know I've I've quit, you know, a lot of things, Um, you know, I really focus on how I sleep, you know, what I eat, you know, my rehab and all that. So I just really just turned my life around of gymnastics is my life and only my life right now. Yeah. And it sounds like, I mean, don't be afraid to say so, because obviously like the OU guys train so hard and it's training for gymnastics in general, but it seems almost like especially with the mindset that Vlad and the your other coach have like or the 5280 gym in general has it seems like you're almost training harder now than you were before do you think that's true or do you think it's different it, it's so I, like a lot of respect to you nothing is better or worse I feel like at the gym I just I think it's it it's hard to say because you know oh you had you know conditioning basics in the morning three events Monday, the other three events, Tuesday, one on six, Thursday, and, you know, team events Friday. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's a great and hard schedule. But now for me, it's six events in the morning, six events in the afternoon on a Monday, six events in the morning, six events uh, in the afternoon on a Tuesday. So I do all six events every single day. Mm -hmm. And for me, I think it's just that I think it's doing all six every single day instead of three here, three here, light day one-on-six team events so I think it's almost just numbers and it's also you know college is just a different strategy you know you have to have a different strategy from hitting good sets to taking a risk yeah of my sets and for me um you know I've just I've gotten to train these harder skills that I didn't you know it wasn't that I wasn't allowed to it you it just yeah. I didn't get to focus on them as much because of you know the team aspect I had yeah. there And, you know, Mark and I still talk, you know, I I still send him routines here and there and he gives me advice and, you know, I give, I send him good lucks to the team. So it's a very open relationship we have. And because of the move, it wasn't that I was picking 5280 or OU on either side. It was just OU's close and I need to get into the gym. And when I got there, you know, I just said, you know, I'm going to, I think I'm going to stay here just because you know, you never know when the NCAA will have to shut down for two weeks because they've got a positive case so for me it really wasn't the training aspect it was you know just the circumstances we were in it seems like you're kind of getting more consistent almost like it, it seems like there's a very big emphasis on consistency um mm-hmm. and and being more reliable I guess because you have to do these turns again and again and you're doing these routines um 
in the morning and in the evening. And there is that emphasis of being able to do it any time of the day. And you're already a pretty consistent guy. Like that's kind of what you're known for on Team USA. And then also, you know, sticky feet and landings and just those fin- that little finesse, those little details. Um, so do you think that you're becoming more consistent with this new training plan? Because it seems like it's very tailored to you. It seems like the coaches have made it where it's like, we want to make you the best of both worlds, OU and 5280 and bring them together. Mm. And then um, produce obviously like the results that you want. So like, do you feel like you're getting more consistent if that's possible? <laughs> so like even at OU, it's all about consistency as well. And I don't think it's, I think what it comes down to is just, like I said, the, the numbers, you know, I'm getting more turns in of these harder skills that I didn't necessarily get to, you know, train as much as you, not because Mark didn't let me, but because it was just the scheduling of how the gym was ran because of, you know, hours we have in the gym and, you know, just kind of the NCAA process. And now I get to be kind of a professional, more of a professional athlete than I was before nothing against either side I think it's just now that I'm being more allowed to train what I need to train to be uh, more successful uh, in my start values so it's actually at first I was not consistent at all like when I got to 5280 and Brian and like tried this and this I'm not gonna lie I was doing really bad (laughs) I was like falling all over (laughs) yeah I was falling all over the place and they were like don't worry just do it. Just keep pushing through. I don't care if it looks sloppy or if it looks bad. What we're going to do right now is we're going to build your endurance up. I'm not going to lie. At one point, I was like, gosh, I don't know if I can keep up with this. Like, I'm in pain. I'm hurting. Like, this is hard. And you can ask my dad. I would come home and just crawl onto my floor and lay down because I was so drained. But it got to the point where I just kept pushing through and it's really gotten really fun because now I'm at the point where I'm trying to literally do everything as perfect as I can. Yeah. Trying to get one or two tenths every time I show a half or, you know, less than a point on every team. So now I have that confidence of hitting because I've done all the numbers. Once you get to that point of pushing through this kind of uphill battle with yourself, you kind of get up to the spot where it's almost like you flatten out and you're like, wow, like I can do this. And it builds that confidence so well where, you know, if you can hit in the morning, you can definitely hit in the afternoon. And that's, that's something that I've learned at 5280, especially is just knowing that you can hit whenever, as long as you just tell yourself you can. And speaking of, you know, getting those extra tents, a lot of the talk kind of around you, like, I guess with like, not necessarily the haters, but naysayers and things like that, is that you aren't, you're consistent. And obviously, I mean, you have just very technically sound gymnastics, but then sometimes it's been about the difficulty. So, and it seems like you're definitely taking a focus on upping the difficulty and getting those star values where they need to be. Do you use that as drive in the past? Or is it just kind of like blocking that out and being like, you know what, I know that I want to make these routines better because I want to do that for me um, and not for anybody else. Uh, Yes and no. For me to um, upgrade, you know, my routines and get cleaner and more consistent, you know, that is almost kind of for myself, but it's also for everyone that's helped me. Um, You know, I, I do a lot of gymnastics for myself, but I also use these outside factors like my coaches, my friends, my teammates, my family to motivate myself to say, hey, do it for them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, people say, you know, you you need to upgrade this and this. And even Johnson Horton at Beach Blast said, I don't know why you isn't doing upgrades. And I I was like, I was, I was competing upgrades. So I don't know what that was. Paying attention? (laughs) I don't know what that comment was. Yeah. You know, when I hear that all the time, it frustrates me because I'm like, hey, like, you can say that I need to upgrade my starts and you you can tell me that I need to do this and that. But until you come and see what I'm doing day in and day out, then you can tell me what to do. Because a lot of people love to just bash you online or just make, you know, comments. And, you know, sometimes maybe they're not, you know, being rude. Maybe it's just like, hey, you should upgrade this, Um, you know. For me, it's almost like I'm I'm doing 
the gymnastics I'm doing because one last year or two years ago, I was battling an elbow injury and my L4 and L5 were ruptured. And it's like, not a lot of people knew that, you know, it, and you were out for a while with that. That was, you were out for like, what, like a few, a few months. Yeah. And so for me, yeah, at 2019 worlds, I didn't show any upgrades, but for me, I was just at peace from my, with myself because I was like, I literally could not do gymnastics for months. And to be able to say that I got back, you know, enough just to make the team, you know, I was happy to say that. And, and yeah, you know, you always have people saying, you know, do this and that, but until they see what you do day in and day out, I never let that affect me negatively yeah. because I know what I'm doing and I know that I have a plan and I know that my coaches have a plan. And so, you know, I just say, you know, like on the gymnastics page, you know, someone said I had bad technique. Oh, I saw that. Yeah. I was just like, like they're having dude, a conversation in our comments. I was like, dude, like, let me see yours or yeah, I, if it's zero off, it doesn't matter if it's bad technique or not. Like that's my style of gymnastics. I'm sorry if my shoulders are forward, but I have a set plan on how I do my routine. And for me, I just kind of laugh because I was like, dude, it, it's whatever. People love to just say things on the internet, but if they were come to say it to my face, I'm sure it'd be a lot different. Yeah. So I, I never let those things affect me negatively. Yeah, I use them to motivate me because, you know, hopefully if I do well at Winter Cup, <laughs> I can just be like, hey, I won P-bars with bad a bad technique front toss bad technique <laughs> so for me it's almost like I laugh because I'm like I know my plan I know what I'm doing people can say what they want but at the end of the day like I said you control your gymnastics and everything will play out Peter's gonna hate which is such a cheesy line but like I have to tell myself that sometimes personally and a lot of I mean a lot of people use that where it's just like because it's very true like it's so cheesy and whatever but people are gonna comment and make you know give you their opinion even when it's not solicited and you just have to be like you just I mean it's tough skin you have to have tough skin in this world especially as an adult in 2021 America so yeah, yeah. um and, and that's so true haters are gonna hate but you know yeah you use it to fuel you yeah but don't let it affect you you know use it to the fuel the fire that you have within you so at the end of the day you can look at it and laugh instead of you know getting angry about it at the end of the day being able to breathe the next day and to live to love to laugh you know that's something that you have to cherish and really enjoy and for me to take five minutes out of my day to get upset about some something someone said you know it's just not worth my time on the positive side of you upgrading and obviously like really pushing yourself in the gym I mean, it seems like you almost have an upgrade on or upgrades on every event. Mm -hmm. So which upgrade at Winter Cup are you doing? Do you, did you say if you're doing the all around? Yeah, I'm doing all around. Yeah, I'm you're doing all around. Close so um, which upgrade do you think fans should look out for? So like, it's like, yes, Jonathan Horton, this is my upgrade right here. <laughs> I think I, my P-bars for sure. Then just the whole routine, I think. I, I would say watch please because I've been working really hard on P-bars. And that's like a 16-0 16 16-4. Yeah, so that's, okay. what, that's what I'm competing day one. And, um, you know, horse, I've gotten up to a 6-0. Mm -hmm. uh, rings, um, I don't know, it, it's kind of in the air if I'm going to do stretch double-double or tuck double-double. Okay. But I'll probably do stretch double double second day, and then vault. We'll see if I'll do triple full. Okay, is that or your chinka or cause? Cause. Cause. Yeah. Um, because I was like, Yul doesn't do a your chinko, but I just wanted to. I actually do do a your chinko now. Oh, you do do a your chinko now? Are you so you have two vaults? I have three vaults. Three vaults. Can I know all three vaults? So I'm, I'm doing soup triple, I'm doing Uchenko triple and Uchenko two and a half, mm -hmm. just to see, you know, which one's better for triple. And then I'm actually working on half on double full. Okay. Yeah, wow. So I'm actually got like a myriad to pick from whenever yeah. two, two faults. Yeah. Or and kind of funny because I never thought of myself as like being a vault 
you know, specialist in doing two vaults, but now it's at the point where it's, it's getting to the point where I might be competing two vaults in the near future. So yeah. it's a really exciting and it's, it's a lot of fun now. Yeah. I mean, it sounds like you're having a lot of fun. And then, I mean, you have so much power on vault. You're really good at finding landings on vault. So it makes sense to have multiple vaults and put your name in the hat for, you know, vault vinyls at whatever events. Yeah. And it takes a lot of time to train multiple vaults. So that's something that I think a lot of people, if just casual gymnastics fans don't understand is that, um, you know, it's like, oh, you can just add in a vault, but it's not. You have to spend specific, dedicated time focusing on each of those vaults that you put into your arsenal so you're confident enough to perform them, correct? Yeah, yeah I probably spend an hour and a half on a vault now. Oh, wow. Yeah, <laughs> every day? Uh, so every day, well, it's it's different every day. I do vault every day, but one day timers on to mats stacked up to vault level so i'll just do like double folds onto that yeah to you know be comfortable knowing that if i can do a double fold onto mats that are stacked up to the vault then i can definitely pull triple yeah and on the other days when i actually have to do vault it is like eight volts of triples eight volts of uchenkos and then eight volts of half on and it gets tiring because it like you have to sprint you know all the time to hit those yeah. and it can get tiring, but it's definitely fun because it's opening new doors that I never thought I would be at. Like for me, I never imagined doing half on and now it's, it's almost like if I don't do it one day, I'll get, you know, in trouble. So it's almost like, it's really fun actually. <laughs> I guess you'll probably just be doing, you'll be doing one vault at Winter Cup. Eventually people can look forward to seeing two or, you know, variety of vaults. So yeah. You know, I think it's good to ask athletes and be like, you know, this really stuck out to me or something that people might not know or something where you want to give your opinion on it because athletes obviously should get a platform. The, the one thing I will say, and I, I want to give credit to, you know, everyone that works hard to, you know, you know, all to trying to get all these events going. I want to say thank you to them. And then I also want to say thank you to all the medical staff you know, in the hospitals, in the gym, just everywhere, just because they've had to go through so much. And then I also want to say that I really, really want to give the credit to all the athletes competing this year, because I know it's been tough and it's been hard, but I, I want them to know that I have, you know, full support of what they're doing because to push through this year and to compete in the NCAA or professional, you know, that's, it's, it's been draining and it's been yeah. unknown to what's going on. So I, I really want to say that I give all my full support to them and give them credit. You're in this together. I mean, really, even if you're not in the same gym or in the same sport, like you're in it together, like you're all are all going through this at the same time. So yeah. first, I wanted to touch on a topic for Th Throwback Thursday, which was the friendship and solidarity meet, because um, you got to go. You almost didn't get to go, kind of, maybe. It seems like from the outside looking in, it was an impactful experience for you because you got to compete alongside, not against mm -hmm. all of these athletes, including like, I know you had a moment with Kohage Mura where y'all both gave each other medals. What was that experience like? It was amazing. It was, you know, something that I will look back on and just smile because it, it even though we had to go through all these, you know, protocols and, you know, weird things at the time, you know, the audience couldn't share, they only could clap, but just to be able to go to Japan and be with, with all those world-class athletes at the time, it was, it was just so amazing because we all kind of just understood what we were all going through at the time. Mm -hmm. and, and to say that I got to be part of it and uh, to say I got to represent, you know, our country, at that time you know we were the first athletes for the u.s for any sport to really go out and and compete for the usa it was a special moment it almost felt like we were the fr first frontiers going out and showing that you know, <laughs> events can happen and yeah. can be safe and for me to be a part of that you know it, it's just i was very honored they're like how are the protocols you know did it suck did, you know how were they and for me i just kind of sit back and i say you know what no matter what circumstances the protocols are I got to say I got to compete and yeah. that's the most important thing is 
I don't care what I have to do. I don't care if I have to be quarantined in my hotel room. I don't care if I have to do all these tests. The fact that you get to go out and compete, you know, that should be special enough. I just pulled up a couple of clips and we're just going to like watch it. And I want to get like your reaction. And if you can like, whatever. I mean, if you remember what was going through your head at that time. So anything that comes to your mind, just like kind of taking a blast from the past and thinking about like how far you've come. Yeah, I think this is actually the event pass. So I was on a high because I just like didn't know that I was like, that good I didn't know that I could have won and and I remember competing to pelt that was probably my favorite skill honestly I but mean your lines are great even at how old were you at this age 2010 I was you know 13 13 14 or whatever we're actually the same age so really? that's how I, I, I hit that <laughs> I was like he's 24 I'm 24 there we go What's crazy is I used to think this routine was so long. Yeah, and it's really quick. It's just like kind of like you hit and go. So the next one is your bronze medal winning floor routine. This um, moment, I was so excited. I, like right there, I remember I was like, oh, let's go floor finals. But I, I was reading in the comments of this exact video and people were like, he should have gotten an even higher execution score. Like. He had, I think you had, if I, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure you had the lowest difficulty score out of all the guys, not discrediting your difficulty, yeah, no, I lower difficulty, but your execution score, I think was the highest, which mm -hmm. is what got you the medal. Yeah, no, I, I remember going to floor finals and Mark was like, you know what, you have the lowest start, but just do what you do and we'll see how it goes. And for me, you know, this whole routine, I could just hear the crowd. And for me, that is always so exciting because I've always wanted to experience big crowds, you know, big moments. And to be on the floor right here, I just remember, I just wanted to smile in every corner because I was like, I'm here. This is my first world. This is so exciting. And I remember after I landed this dismount, I hit and I was like, oh, let's, let's go. I don't care if I medal or not. I just got to compete. And yeah. Then, I just let it loose here, you know, I, <laughs> celebration. Got a yeah. lot of, of, of NCAA emotion. Like every time I see you guys out there doing these things, like you are always pumped up and it's like, I mean, it's, it's great. It's great. The kind of atmosphere that Team USA brings to the table at these international meets because other countries can be so mm -hmm. serious, which is okay. There's nothing wrong with being serious, but for me, when I compete and I get done with the routine, I I want to interact with the crowd because I feel like that's something that me and the crowd can relate on. You know, if whether you know gymnastics or not, you know, some people might see, you know, the skills, oh, that he just twisted, even though you did a double twist and a triple twist, you know. Uh, but when you're done with the routine and you interact with the crowd and you get hyped and, and you make them want to cheer, I feel like that just makes things more exciting. And for me to go out and compete, I always try and look at it as, you know, this is a performance. This isn't a competition. You know, the judges aren't there to try and take anything from you. They're just, you know, the judges. And um, you know, I always try and get people involved in gymnastics because I just feel like it, it's, it gets more exciting. People want to cheer louder. And, it, and it's just, it's more fun. You know, when you go yeah. to an NCAA meet and it's loud, there's a lot of energy, you know, that's so fun to be in. And I, I want to bring that to, you know, the meets in the U.S. You know, I want people to be able to scream. I want people to be able to feel like they can cheer loud and stand up and get excited because I feel like when you have an atmosphere of excitement, you know, things are just more exciting. And when you can build on that, you'll get more people to come watch, you know. The last thing I wanted to talk about with Throwback Thursday is I wanted to ask you, you and Eddie both looked so tan. Did y'all like this wasn't like Montreal. Like, are y'all just like both naturally tan or did like the team go get like team spray tans or something? So I tan very easily. You know, yeah. I don't even have sunscreen. Um, oh my gosh. You should see me in the summer. I can get really dark, but you know, Montreal was so beautiful. Mm -hmm. It was like perfect weather. It was like, you could wear anything you wanted. And we actually took a walk one day and I think probably that's where we got our tan, but you know, now that I think about it, I really did look tan in that video. You looked really tan, like really tan, and so did, like I said, Eddie, and I think Sam looked tan. Everybody. I think it was 
fun there. It was just beautiful weather. It was, you know, bright and sunny. And we did a lot of walking just because we didn't want to feel trapped in our hotel room waiting. And so we really went out and, you know, Sam, me and Sam hung out a lot, actually, because, you know, he, he did one event. Yeah. Because he was back from the surgery. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we went and got crepes one time and we just walked up and down, like, you know, the city because it was so beautiful there. It was, yeah. for me, I want to go back just to take a vacation because the food was amazing. You know, the the vibe was so awesome like everyone was happy Mm -hmm. Uh, and there was a lot to do there so we were always just outside doing stuff and I yeah I just that was probably one of my favorite experiences as um, a team just because I felt like we all really got along together Mm -hmm. and we all had to go out and explore the city Mm -hmm. and I think that's probably where we got our city name it looked great I can never obviously like look at me. I'm compared to you compared I do not tan I get red I sunburn I put on sunscreen I have sunscreen on right now I put sunscreen on always um <laughs> it's just bad news bears I've never been tan in my life people tell me to get spray tans and I'm just like I got married last summer um that's when we got married and it's just like somebody was like are you gonna get a spray tan my mom and sister got one and I was like, no, I'm not getting a spray tan. That's just like gonna look weird on me. Like, look how white I am. <laughs> I'm not <laughs> getting a spray tan. You don't um, look that white. You got some tan to you though. Thank you. Um, I like to, it's pink. Um, but uh, I think I ended up in my wedding photos. Like I had like this strap dress and I swear I got sunburned. Like oh, somehow, man. some way, like right between the straps or they were irritating me or something. But I was just like, I did not put on sunscreen that day because it was a five o'clock wedding. And I was like, I'm not putting on sunscreen in my wedding dress. Like, that's just weird. And it smells weird. Yeah. And, just, and, <laughs> and then I freaking saw the sunburn in like the pictures. And I'm just like, to this day, I'm just like, I don't know what <laughs> happened there. <laughs> but it's just like, of course, on my wedding day, I would get sunburn. Um, that's awesome. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> most thrilling thing you've ever done roller coaster skydiving things like that uh race cars hidden talent i can dj you can dj i can see that like i've got i get dj vibes from you um i see all your music (laughs) wait what i hope not bad dj vibes no not bad dj vibes i see all your like music recommendations on like instagram and stuff is that also is that your pug that i saw last night or is like your dad's dog his name's Seymour. <laughs> he is so cute. I can he see like out. he's like I could see you literally like doing a DJ set with like Seymour right there. Like, that's, like, the, <laughs> he, like yeah. sticking his tongue out and like having the earphones on and like. I'll have to take a picture. <laughs> who is your role model? Um, my role model is my brother. Favorite non gymnastics activity. Um, I really like sports. Actually, I'm really into airsoft. Okay, like that's like the gun. <laughs> I'm yeah, like paintball airsoft. Like I, I go hard. I got like walkie talkies. You know, I got the full like modern warfare outfit, like knee pads, vests, like extra clips. I'm ready to go. <laughs> oh my gosh! You know, it'd be really funny if all of the Team USA guys went and did airsoft together. I wonder who would come out on top on that. That'd probably—I mean, I'm sure you'd probably be up there. But that'd be- the guy who literally will crawl on his elbow to stick it to a spot. They would all—I could imagine it right now, where like some of the guys are just like, "What are you doing, Yule?" And you're just like. I'm serious about this. So actually, one of my teammates, Vitaly Gimarais, yeah, and me and him used to go so hard. We would bring a blank piece of paper to any place we went, and he would draw out a map and make like call outs, and we <laughs> have walkie talkies. And one time we played airsoft for so long, we told everyone to bring extra batteries, extra BBs, bring a backpack. And me and Vit brought flashlights and like food in our backpack, and we're like, all right, we're playing all day long. Oh my gosh. Like, so this is like so serious. Like if airsoft was in the Olympics, you'd be like, okay, this can be after gymnastics. This yeah. is, this is, I could go for this. You and, you and Vitaly can literally be like a pairs on that. Oh yeah. Me and that, dynamic. That was, if you had a walk-up song, what would it be? Uh, I actually,
actually have a walk up song in mind. I need to uh, look at the name because I just found it because I told myself I'm going to play it as soon as I walk into uh, walk into Winter Cup in my headphones. Okay. It's called Vedma, V E D M A, by Brothel and Enjoy. <laughs> okay, that's like an interesting name. It, it's a pretty hype song. It's a hype song, okay. I'll have to look that up, Vedma. And now we know for Winter Cup that uh, that that's what everybody needs to, when, you're, when you're walking in. That's what you're going to be listening to. Yep. What is your biggest fear? Worms. Worms? I do not like worms. And everyone knows this because I've, like, my friends used to tease me all the time. They'd get, like, a hair time, like, you little worm, throw it at me. And I'd be like, oh, and run. I just don't like slimy things. Like I mean, worms are really gross. I don't even put worms on the hook when I go fishing. I'm like, eh, I'll just stick to power bait. I'll stick it in there and see what happens. <laughs> Funny thing about this isn't worms related, but in Georgia, it's like ladybug season. And I kid you not, like I live in a ladybug graveyard. Like I just have dead ladybugs everywhere, which is really sad <laughs> and also kind of gross, but they just get into our apartment. And the other day, and we clean them up, but they just keep coming and they're on the ceiling and my cat is trying to scrape them down. And yeah, they're just like doing that, like where they're just like at a wall and scraping. But the other day, yesterday, I kid you not, you'll, I literally went into the bathroom to get my water cup and it had like a straw like this. It was like another Starbucks cup. Okay. I took a sip of it and there was a ladybug in my cup, in my straw, like right up. And I took a sip and I thought... I was like, it's only water. Like, did I get food in my straw or something? And like, you know what I mean? (laughs) But I got it in my mouth. It tasted horrible. Like, I didn't, I was like, I was sitting there. You know what I was thinking? I was thinking, is it like bad food? Like, should I just swallow it or should I spit it out? And like the taste developed. I went and spit it out in the sink. That ladybug was still alive. And it was... Oh... It was so gross. To this moment, I'm literally like disgusted by it. Every time you take the water of it, you're like, "Yeah." I was just like, my husband was like, "You need to just axe the straw cups from just for the rest of ladybug season until they disappear <laughs> because you don't want that to happen again." No, so I think I might start developing a fear of ladybugs because I'm just like, <laughs> they do not. By the way, ladybugs do not taste good. I think I made that clear. Not good. <laughs> don't recommend it. Um, <laughs> Yeah. On Valentine's Day too. I was just like happy Valentine's Day to me. Favorite game to play like on your phone or Xbox, PlayStation? Big Call of Duty guy. I'm really competitive. Like I will, I will be one of those guys that will scream into the mic. (laughs) You sound like my little brother. My brother is 10 years younger than me. And that's all he does. He stays in his room. He's remote learning all year. And my sister's just like, she lives with him. And she's just like, you just hear him screaming. And he's just screaming at you don't know who, but that's like, you know, that's the thing. It gets serious. It gets heated. It gets heated. No, I have the whole setup. I've got like the LED lights. I've got like the scuff controller, the, the headset that you can hear footsteps from like a mile away. So I, I go pretty hard with my teammates on that game. If you have a bad day in the gym and then you have a bad day on Call of Duty. Oh, you'll get really mad easily. <laughs> do, do you ever play, play with like random people and like they have no idea who you are like? Olympic hopeful, world medalist, like somebody who's like pretty big, oh. and like you're just like no. Sometimes people in the lobbies will say some mean things, like they're like, "Go home, kid. You don't have a life." And I'm like, "Oh, if you knew who I was." <laughs> that shows you that you could literally be playing like Call of Duty with LeBron James and probably not know. Yeah. No. Seriously. And then, what is your favorite movie? Who I'm. Oh man. Well. That's hard. I have so many favorite movies, like from like childhood movies to movies now. But I think I've always just been a big Transformer guy. <laughs> but I've been really into like I watched Mandalorian. I love that show. Yes, I love I Baby Yoda. Yoda. I have like everything Baby Yoda. I actually have a Mandalorian cup I wanted to use, but it's in the dishwasher right now. Oh no! Is it like one that's like shaped like um, Mando's head? Yeah. Oh my god, I got one of those for my uncle for Christmas. Yeah. It's so cool looking. And like I just love that show. It's awesome. It's really yeah, cool. Fun. All Disney movies, you know, cars, ratatouille, Wally, classics, you know. 
Mm -hmm. Yep, I know. We are big Disney people in this house. What's your favorite skill? My favorite skill right now is probably um, the full spindle on the handles. Okay. Is 2024 a possibility? Definitely. Definitely. Favorite part about gymnastics? My favorite part about gymnastics is that you really get to make so many friendships and relationships with the whole gymnastics community, and it can open so many other doors to after gymnastics, like a career, you know, a job, or just having people at your wedding that you did gymnastics with. I think that's really cool. Have you ever had to deal with any type of discrimination during your gymnastics journey? Not in gymnastics, but actually a month ago, I a got... Yeah, I got cut off on, on the street by a lady in a white Escalade. <laughs> and I honked my horn because I was like, hey, you just cut me off. Like, your light was definitely red, and you just turned in front of me. And she braked hard, so I went into the other wing. I was like, okay, I don't want to deal with this, so I'm just going to pass her. She, at the next light, rolled down her window and was like, move back to China. And I was like, oh, my God. In my mind, I looked at her, I laughed, I waved, and I drove off and I was like man if that lady knew that I had to put USA on my chest and represent people like her when I go out and compete I hope she feels ashamed like for me that I never had something like that happen to me and for me I could have gotten upset but at the end of the day I was just like you know it's just words she doesn't know who I am she doesn't she doesn't know what I've done for this country what I have to do but it sucked. It definitely sucked and it wasn't fun. But, you know, people just feel like they can judge anyone by their cover. But at the end of the day, I feel like if she knew my background, she would have never said that. And I feel like that's where this society gets lost is they're not educated enough with each other. Yeah. I mean, all top type walks of life are Americans and even a few immigrated here, which I like you were adopted, but I mean, like adults like immigrating here, like you're still an American. That's kind of the whole part of being an American. Uh, or at least that's what our country was like supposed to be built on. But I'm sorry you had to deal with that. That's terrible. It's okay. You know, people are just people and they sometimes, you know, say things they don't mean because it's in the moment. So that's yeah. the way I looked at it. And, you know, oh, well. Why does Team USA like to scream so much during routines? For me, it's because it shows the brotherhood we have and the love that we have for each other. And like, we've had countries all the time, like, why are you guys so loud? Like, you guys are wasting energy. And it's like, I don't care. I'm with my brothers. Yeah. And I'm going to go to battle with them. You know, this is us. This is our style. If you don't like it, you don't have to be a part of it. Mm, that's interesting. That some countries are like. Yeah, no, uh, Russia actually asked us, they're like, why do you guys scream so loud? You guys are wasting energy. And we were just like, eh, whatever. Like, that's just our style of gymnastics. Yeah, I mean, the Russians are notoriously, I guess, more reserved and focused, but that's not the only way to do it. Um, yeah. So that's I mean, at OU, we were always known as, you know, we don't, why, why do they cheer so loud? And it's because we work so hard in the gym yeah when you get to a meet it's our way of expressing that we're here we worked hard to get here let it all out people shouldn't be made to feel shameful for being passionate about something or happy about something yeah no that's just one thing you know show your emotions show crying show being excited you know at the end of the day you're yourself and you can have haters are gonna hate but at the end of the day it's it's your body, it's your mind, and do whatever you want because no one should have a say in what you do. It's what you want to do. What are your goals for 2020? I mean, 2021, I mean, obviously Olympic team is there, but like when you think of the year ahead, personally, as well as like in your career, like what are you looking forward to and, and what do you want to look back at the end of this year and be like, you know what? It was a really good year. Make the Olympic team. Um, earn an Olympic medal as a team and then earn an Olympic medal individually and all around um, and you know hopefully on an event but as a career you know I want to be able to make it to multiple Olympic teams 
I want to be able to go until 2028 to say, you know, to hopefully make the team in 2028 to say I got to retire in the U.S. because it's going to be in Los Angeles, and I think that would be badass. That's awesome. But my career goal, you know, I I think about my our sport, and, you know, it's scary with all the NCAA programs shutting down and with kind of men's gymnastics dying out. Um, and so my goal is to bring back the life of men's gymnastics. You know, you think about – 2008 when the men's team medaled we had so many enrollments for the men's side you know that's when really men's gymnastics I feel like popped off and I feel like we just haven't brought enough hardware back as a team so my goal is to hopefully be an individual that can help this team bring back medals as a team and individually to bring back the life of men's gymnastics again to make it exciting to make it be aired on ESPN to make it have more gymnastics programs across the country. So, you know, I, I don't know if you saw, but I always say man on a mission. Mm -hmm. That is my mission is to save this sport and to get it recognized again. And my goal is to be the Michael Jordan of men's gymnastics. I want to be looked at like Kohei. I want to be able to say I have multiple world medals. I have multiple Olympic medals. So for me, I want to be the Michael Jordan of gymnastics. And I know that's hard, but- That's something to strive for. If you don't strive to be the top, you know, then I don't know what you're striving for. I do want to say before you go, I saw on something that said like your name, you were named after, since you had like a little hair as a baby, you were named after bald actor Yul Brenner. Is that true? Okay. So I thought it was true because my mom said, oh, like it kind of relates to you, but I guess kind of not. I think if my mom named me after, hey, dad. Do you know why I was named Yule? Well, it helped to us like an uh, Asian style name. Uh -huh. And it was really unique. And we were lamenting giving the first kid a, a unique, an unique name. And Georgia got a unique name. So we wanted you to have a unique name because it sounded Asian. That's yeah. Right. <laughs> Well, there's the real answer, but I remember that at one time we were watching a Yule Brenner movie, and we kind of just related because he had no hair, and when I came, I had no eyebrows, I had no hair, and then now I'm just, you know. Yeah, I know, right? That's what I was thinking about. I saw that in my notes, and I was just like, I have to ask him because, like, it's funny if that you had little hair, and now you just have, like, the hair. Like, when think people think of the U.S. men's team, your hair is what comes to mind, okay? <laughs> the rest of the guys can be bald. That's fine. <laughs> Jules got the hair, so you you win that award easy, no problem. <laughs> All right, well, thank you so much for talking with me, Yule, and um, we are looking forward to seeing you compete in Indianapolis. Thank you, and thanks for having me. This was super fun. <laughs> All right, thanks so much. I'll talk to you later. Yeah, thanks. Have a good one. Bye.